the Fantasy Fair where we talk all things Disney news and stuff like that. Because I would say another <laughs> thing. I would say another thing. But that patent, apparently. That's copyright. Yeah, uh, it's copyright. Yes. Love copyright. Hmm? You don't think it's a bit echoey? Uh, no. No, because okay. we're... Okay. Right here. Um, anyway, so... I'm your host, Kyle Lira, coming to you live from my dining room table, my glorious dining room table. It's very, it's very rustic. And with me today, I have... Alexis. Peter Martinez. How are you today, sir? Oh, hi. That's great. That's great. Great to know. Anyway, since it is still the month of Halloween... We're going to be going over our top five favorite Disney villain lists. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to be going over their songs and all that Is shit. Is it favorite songs? Favorite songs. Okay. Favorite songs. Okay. It's okay. our favorite songs list. Uh, first, we're going to start with you. Okay. And then... And then uh, I think we should start with you. And then uh, and then it's gonna be uh, me. And then we're gonna have our very own Alexis Soto give off his own uh, his uh, his favorite list. But we're gonna Wait. edit we're gonna edit his list in later. Who? Alexis Soto. Who? Alexis Soto. I don't know who you're talking about. I t- uh, uh, some some guy wanted to bring in his own. Uh, opinion into this so so i'm like oh okay i I guess more content i guess so anyway no i'm kidding alexis you know you know we care (laughs) oh you want me to say something (laughs) ah okay all right i'm not saying nothing we're talking about uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, and then after that, we're going to be going over uh, news from the other ground. And uh, we're going to be going over the news. Um, so a little bit of Star Wars, a little bit of Marvel, a little bit of Mary Poppins as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is the fantasy. show today Kyle and Peter I don't know why I'm talking in the third person but Kyle and Peter are going to be going over our top five favorite Disney villain songs Peter what's your favorite <laughs> okay top five favorite for warning yeah I completely forgot to make a list but oh it's god. all in my head it's all in my head okay number one oh god okay is, uh Dr. Felicier that's his name right yeah From the princess and the frog uh, friends on the other side. Ooh, okay. And it, it's funny because this entire film is yeah, it gets a little bit looked over. I feel yeah because a lot of people feel that the new Disney uh, has to be CG Renaissance or whatever the new one that's yeah. come about is because started at Tangled. I say it started at Princess I've, and the Frog. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I, I really, really enjoy that film. I, it's my favorite film musically. I, I really like jazz and stuff like that. So yeah, it, really I, it has a really good uh, New Orleans feel. Oh, yeah, they, they really took advantage of the the setting. And I really, I just, it, I love his song, Friends on the Other Side. It, it's very uh, mystical and eerie, but yet... Yeah. But it's yet, fun. like, it's fun too. Yeah. I mean, it, number one, that, that it's a real Disney villain song to me. Like, and not just not just that. I mean, first you first it starts. It doesn't have like no musical intro or anything like that. It's just yeah. don't disrespect me, little man. You know, and, and I love how it, yeah. And uh, see, seeing the seeing it animated mm-hmm. is beautiful. It's all in itself. Beautiful. It, it has the purple, the green, and it has it has like. The blacks and the reds, and it's just used all the spectrum of the rainbow. It's uh, detailed, but it's still old school. And one of the things I love in musicals mm-hmm. is when the song advances the story. Yeah. Like, to me, that's sort of the whole point of songs in musicals. Is that they're... That they, like Les Mis? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this is a different story because I hate when it's just they sing every word. 
like, hello, we're going to the market. And it's like, <laughs> it gives me a, I don't like that. Okay, grab the keys. <laughs> I cannot find the keys. Where did you leave them? I don't know. Like, that's, it, it gets really annoying. Like, it gives me a migraine. But, um, are you, would you say that you feel miserable after? <laughs> Why do I talk to you? Okay. <laughs> but the, the point is, um, yeah, because, like, some some musicals kind of just mm -hmm. have, like, songs randomly in there. Yeah. And I don't like that because it's, like, I, the entire time I feel like, okay, like, why are we doing this? Cut to you the know? chase. Yeah. And you can kind of say that with, like, action films, too. Like, when there's literally just, like, an action scene out of nowhere, like, you, you can tell there's no reason it's there. Just It's just they felt obligated to put one in there. Because um, a song is kind of the action scene for uh, musicals. Yeah. But it, it should always serve what the story. Without explosions. Yeah. Those, uh, those hips are the explosions and the dance, you know? I dance, don't know. magic dance. I don't know where I was going with that. But, yeah, I, I just think it's a really fun song. Uh, the second would be Hellfire. Ah, uh, beautiful. By... Uh, What's his name? Frollo. Frollo. I, I don't know. I always Claude forget Frollo. his name. Claude Frollo. Minister Claude Fro Fro uh, Frollo. Yeah. And he, honestly, he's like the most vicious Disney villain. Dude, he's burning down an entire city because he's cause he, cause he's infatuated with a girl. That's it. That's the only motive he has. And it's, and it's just such a, like a dark and like interesting subject matter for a Disney Dude, song. Dude, he's, he's it's, creepy. He's literally singing about... How he's lusting for this girl, yeah, and he and like he's afraid of going to hell because he's feeling lust. But the way he turns it around in his head is like, oh no, it's not my fault. It's, it's her, her fault. fault. Yeah, that I'm lusting after her. She shouldn't be so. She shouldn't look that way. Yeah, and it's just, it's fun. It's funny because just describing it, it doesn't seem like it would be. And, a it, and it's kind film. of cool seeing the psychological, cool. yeah, you know, side of it. Not not only that. I mean, you hear the the church choir in the background and you know it, it's very uh it's very spiritual and in a in a very creepy-esque way you know so but it's also just a good song not only that it fun. has one of the most amazing looking imagery in the disney disney in the disney film lineup because yeah. you see all the cloaked uh, figures and he's running through them you know just little little detail to that and uh alan Menken, man Alan Menken, he's a hell of a Disney writer. Uh, it's a great Disney, song. Yeah. Uh, okay, number three yes. is from The Little Mermaid. Oh, uh, Poor Unfortunate Souls. Yes. Uh, poor, Ursula. Uh, poor Unfortunate Souls. And let's not forget the essence of body language. What? That, that's, a, that's a line in the song. Cool. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just being mean. But uh, Little Mermaid was always one of my favorites. I can't. Were you the one that doesn't like Little Mermaid? Or was it oh, okay, it? I love the Little Mermaid. Yeah. I love it as a film. I do not like Ariel. Oh, okay. okay. I do not like Ariel. But the rest yeah. of the movie is absolutely yeah. amazing, perfect. The Little Mermaid as a kid was always uh, one of my favorites, and then and then that's another one where it's just a fun song. Like she's just. Dun, 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 I always dun, 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 I like dun. the villains that just like relish in being yeah. evil. And she just I admit, she loves like, it. like the first lines in the in the song. I admit, in the past, I've been a nasty. They weren't <laughs> kidding when they called me well a witch. <laughs> She's a nasty woman, like yeah, like Hillary. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> yes, I fit uh, in. I fit in politics somehow. I have thanks. to. Thanks. <laughs> um, da -na 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 -na. <laughs> what number is that? Uh, that's uh, uh, your third one. Is that barely my third that's one? Your bar that's barely your third one, yeah. Okay, um, fourth? Yes. Uh, let me think real quick. Okay, Scar. Oh, Lion be King. prepared. Be prepared. Yes. And uh, a lot of it, because honestly, I don't think the imagery for that song is that, like, Interesting. Other than the other than the Hitler uh, Nazi. Yeah, there's a weird little Hitler it, it, thing imagery. going on. Yeah, Hitler imagery going on. It's, it's a little weird too, but <laughs> given the film, but I get it, you know. But it's it's I just really like uh, what's his name, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. You know the last uh, the last quarter of the song isn't written isn't sung by him. Really? It's written. It's a uh, song by Jim Cummings, um, because he was trying to do like the last part of the song, but he blew out his voice. 
Oh, so, so he stepped in. So uh, Jim Cummings came in, and you could hear Jim Cummings' voice, you know, at the last part of the song. So uh, it, it is a, uh, it is really cool. I, I love how how powerfully menacing it is, just because he's he's planning something, and and it goes back to what you were saying, how a, a plot, you know, song being used as a plot device. Yeah, you know, so and I and I really like that because it, it's like him saying that, oh, I'm gonna kill him, you know. That, that's yeah. that's the whole song in a nutshell. I'm gonna kill my brother, you know. And so uh, I know you adore Lion King. I adore I adore that song. I I love that song. Uh -huh. For me, it's, it's okay. badass. It, for me, it's okay. You definitely love it a lot more than I do. Yeah, but it's, it's I would still rank it among the top tier. Yeah, the top tier ones. Um, I have an idea for number five. What? I don't think you'll accept it. I, I do, it's your list. Okay, I don't, okay. I don't care. Let It Go. Let It Go? By Elsa. Okay. Good to go. Oh, oh, I, I, okay, go tell. Tell me. Tell me. This, this works on multiple layers and on multiple levels. Okay. First of all, originally, she was supposed to be the, the main villain for that film. Yes. That, she was supposed to. So, you so know, theoretically, theoretically, you know, but then also she, even in the film, everything is kind of her fault. Like she did cause the winter and I'm pretty sure she froze a few people. Let's be honest here. Winter's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and she created evil snowmen. I mean, she, she, she isn't a saint. All right. Also, she's a queen. She's a queen. Yas queen. queen. <laughs> I hate you. But um, it also works in a very literal way because she has been a menace to parents everywhere in which they have young daughters who endlessly, oh, okay. 24-7, okay. play Let It Go. And I'm sure there are parents out there that just want to... Beg to differ. <laughs> they just want to throw their kids against the wall because they will not shut up about let that. Let it go. Yes. Let it, they should let it go. <laughs> Did it, like... The, the people that made Frozen come out and, and apologize. Yeah, sorry, we didn't know it was gonna be such a hit. I'm sorry. Yes. So in a lot of ways, it's become the new Akuna Matata because I remember because yeah. I remember for a while it was Akuna Matata that oh, they yeah. wanted to throw children against the wall because children would be going up to the parents and say Akuna Matata, and they're like, "Shut up, kid." Uh, but in a lot of ways, this is a very villainous song. So yes, number five is, is let, it, let go. it go. Oh man. <laughs> uh. <laughs> can't argue with this one. You just can't. It's just ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. I have to show you something later. I want to show you something later. I, uh, I, I can't. Won't like it, but. Um. But anyway. I'm gonna give you mine. All right. Mine, mine, no, mine. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what song that is? No. It's Pocahontas. Remember? No. Remember the? I, I don't know what the name is. I don't know what the name is. The, oh, the villain. The, the villain of uh, in Pocahontas. Uh, Pocahontas is me. Uh, but anyway, but no, that's not on my list. Right. Mine, mine, mine is not on my list. Good. Um. My number one favorite song. Mm -hmm. is I've never heard something so vile and wicked and something that that really embodies something that's pure evil and evil motives and something that's mm -hmm. talking about character. And this is a very character developing song uh, and it is very um, and it is very uh, eerie to listen to, but yet it is it captures something more powerful than itself. I'm really trying and, to know where you're going. And, with and this. it is Hellfire. Okay. As my number one favorite song. It's a great song. It's a great I, song. It is a really good song. Alan Macon knocked it out of the park in writing this song. I mean, to, it, it. I mean, it it really uh, brought forth themes that that no other Disney film has delved into. And I like do. lust, sin, and yeah. religious. Uh, yeah, yes. religious. It's very religious. And I, I would say, like, I, I wish they got into more, like, uh, riskier subjects like that. Mm -hmm. But I would say they kind of did with Zootopia. 
Well, yeah, with the with the whole uh, yeah. racial, you yeah. know, equality thing going on. But also like prejudices and problems with you know, you know, police and the way we judge each other. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, I, I think. They, they're. Uh, I, I love Disney when they take a uh, chances, a little bit of chances, and yeah, risk. Yeah, and that song and just that whole film was really one of them. I love. I love. I just love the whole church imagery and. Yeah. Uh, there's several songs about sin and God, and it's 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 one of the better, one of the best Disney films, and I yeah. think a lot of people forget about it. Because as a kid, I remember going, I like, think, it okay, was never, like, to me, the one problem, of the big ones. The problem with me about that movie is gargoyles. Yeah. At first, at first yeah. I think that the gargoyles are brilliant, mm-hmm. are brilliant because it, it it played off as something that that Quasimodo was envisioning. Mm-hmm. You know, it just plays off as that. And so I'm like, that's, okay, that, that's really tragic, seeing, seeing that, you know, his only companionship is with these gargoyles. But then, then at the end, they start going, like, all World War II fighter pilot thing with, with a couple of the gargoyles, and they come to life, and they help the, the battle. And that just, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way in that part. But the rest of the movie is just, like, pure flawless other than that I, I think um I think that's the, that's what they were trying to go at the beginning and then I don't know they didn't tell the people at the end they're like yeah it's it's not they should have had like they there. should have had text on the bottom of the screen saying oh by the way gargoyles are real yeah that does kind of mess it up a little but it's still it's still but uh, the rest man really I mean not only that I mean you have Tom Hulse doing the in- interlude to this song mm-hmm. um called the uh, Heaven's Light Mm-hmm. And that that right there is a beautiful like intro comparing the like the light and the darkness and you see the two counterbalances. It's kind of a both of a hero song and a villain song because and the the main track is called Heaven's Light and and uh, Hellfire. So I I like seeing the the deep contrast of evil versus good kind of thing. So that's really cool. Um, my number two, my number two favorite song. You know. It's, it's gambling. It, 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 it's the it's this essence. It's the it's kind of the reason why you like uh, you like uh, the song "Poor Unfortunate Souls" um, because it's like the guy the the person singing it is like he knows he's wicked and he's just toying with the uh, with the. Uh, with uh, with a good character in the in the in the song and it is the Oogie Boogie song. Oh, so you went Nightmare. Yeah, I, I, I love the Oogie Boogie song. I didn't know Nightmare counted. Yeah, it counts. It counts. It's Disney. It's Was it Disney. released by Disney, though? I thought they, it, like, bought t- it afterwards. No, Touchstone is a is a subsidiary of, uh, of, uh, Disney? of Disney. Um, but it wasn't released with, like, Walt Disney Pictures Presents. No, uh, it wasn't. Well, on the poster it says Disney's... Yada yada. But when yada. it was originally released, it said that. I think so. I don't think I'm it not, did. Um, but then, uh, and now it's like everywhere in the parks. It's you know every. I think after it got popular, they're like, oh wait, this is ours. <laughs> they they were afraid of taking it too dark, and then after seeing Hunchback of Notre Dame, I'm like this, <laughs> you're afraid of taking it too dark. But anyway, I digress. That is a that is a fun song. The Oogie Boogie song. I mean, just the well, well, well. What have we got here, Santa Claus? Ooh, I'm very scared to sing. Yeah. And uh, not only that, what a cool design. Yeah. What it a is. cool design. The Boogeyman is a really cool design. Seeing that, and then the inside is bugs and the very uh, potato sack kind of kind of design. It's just like. It looks like I remember it freaking me out. <laughs> it, it, it was cool, and just seeing the colors, the seeing the colors of the the way it's made, the way it's shot, um, the and it is it is the formal introduction of this character because you don't really see Oogie Boogie until he starts singing this song. Yeah, um, you see shadows of him everywhere, but you don't see his actual uh, his actual uh, presence on screen until this very uh, until this very uh, song and what a hell of a way to go you know so I think that Oogie Boogie I mean it's just it, it, it makes me want a boogie <laughs> um, my next favorite song I cannot it is one of my favorite movies of all time and I can't help but put it on my on my favorites mm-hmm. list um, be prepared 
is amazing. Just, it, it is deliciously evil, just him being conniving and planning this whole entire thing with the, um, with the hyenas. I mean, Scar is, has got to be in the top five uh, best Disney villains list, right? I mean, just like in all, in general. I mean, he's just like an a-hole. Yeah, I mean, he wants. To, he's an a murderous a hole who wants to kill his his. Uh, well, he's smart, except when it comes to ruling. Yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ruin everything. <laughs> uh, but be prepared, man. I mean, we we went over this before on your list, but um, it's it, it, it's a unique song. It's a really unique song going into the, into the, into the... Do you think it's unique? I don't think it's unique. I think it's stylistically and, and the formula on which they, they wrote it is very unique. I mean, you, you have this slow, uh, slow build and then it's slowly increasing, increasing, increasing. And then it hits to like the, to the sea, to the wonders I am, you know, just... Mm -hmm. And then when it when it's building, it's like this this lovely escalator ride that you're taking. Well, you'll be able to hear it again in the live action Lion King coming 2018. Yes, I can't wait for it. I know you're hating. I'm such a hater right now. Like it it, it seriously it it burns my soul that I, they're making a live action Lion King. I it, could, and it's not even because I love the Lion King like like super a lot. It's just. I'm it's because you're done with live action I'm Disney movies. Live action Disney movies. Uh, but be prepared. I, I love to be prepared. The next one you have on your number one favorite, mm -hmm. um, and it is Friends on the Other Side. I I think that I think that kind of sort of Oogie Boogie song and Friends on the Other Side is kind of equally matched, like in They're terms of stylist, similar. in terms of style. Um, but you get uh, one of uh, Randy Newman's better songs. Uh, did, Brand, did Randy Newman? Write Randy it? Newman wrote this oh, song. Oh, that's definitely one of his better songs. Um, so you have Randy Newman doing the doing the music for this, uh, and and you could tell like it's a very jazzy, clubby, mm -hmm. clubby thing. Uh, you, I could definitely, t I could definitely feel like I'm like at a coffee shop in New Orleans, and I'm hearing this guy doing a jazz, like a jazz number, you know. <laughs> doing that on a, on a, on a coffee shop. So I, I really like the vibe with this song. You know, yeah. I think that that's really cool is the vibe. And not only that, I mean, it's just as all these, all these, uh, musical inclinations that, Hey guys, I'm a bad guy. I'm here to do bad things. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that really, that really, uh, that really did it in for me. My next song is not a traditional, uh, um, Disney villain song. But I think that I think that this song is definitely. I mean, to me, other than uh, other than Frollo, I think this guy epitomizes what evil is in Disney. Okay. Night on Bald Mount Mountain. Oh, okay. Night on Bald Mountain. To be fair. Yes. There is no singing whatsoever. Yes, but it is a song, nevertheless. Is it? It is a song. Is it? Yes, it is. Um, anyway, Night on Bald Mountain, just, you feel like hell is coming, coming out of this song, you know, that, and you, you get the, just hearing the, um, just hearing the trumpets, the low trumpets, mm -hmm. the trumpets, the cellos, and the, and the violins, and it's just an amazing musical piece mm -hmm. to fully embody what Chernabog is, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing him, like, create, you know, disaster and all the elements was pretty cool, and also you get to see uh, you get to see uh, Disney uh, Disney boobs in that song. I, the, just a little factoid in there: you actually get to see. Uh, I mean, they're like dead souls, but uh, you get to see uh, nips in that. So I was I was like, what pervert? This is a Disney movie because people weren't so childish back then. Yeah, and then nowadays everybody was like. Oh. I know there'd probably be protests. And stuff. Yeah, if that was moot. But people are ridiculous. But grow up. I think that one of the most epitomal Disney villains. Epitomal. He doesn't. He doesn't even say anything in here. Scary though. Scary. Yeah, but he's scary as hell, man. You know what though? I really want a, 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 a like a Mickey film, and I want 
You uh, want Trini Blog to Chernobog to be the main villain? Yeah. That would be amazing. That'd be cool, right? That would be amazing. I wanted Chernobog, actually, I wanted him to be like the main the 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 last villain in Once Upon a Time, but they f- oh okay. they messed up. I've, I I I really hate Once Upon a Time. Yeah. But I did see a clip in which Chernobog was in it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I'm never watching this show because it looks so stupid. <laughs> well, you have your reasons, and <laughs> pretty good reasons, but. I think he was fighting Corella DeVille. Yeah. So I was just like, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, they pressed the, press the eject button. Although, if she would have threw puppies at him, I probably would have watched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, messed up. Sorry, PETA. Sorry, PETA. Uh, whatever. Uh, and the humane for pets. You humane uh, humane society. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Huma- yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's my that's my top five favorite Disney villains list. Alexis Soto, what do you think about it? Hi Red Spotters. This is Alexis Soto checking in here after a very, very um not so relaxing vacation. Um and not paid leave, unlike some people who give paid leave, <clears throat> not Kyle Lyra. Anyway, I am here because I have been asked to provide my top five favorite Disney villain songs and why, as if I wasn't already going to tell you why. Okay, so to top off, we have number five. This is I Want to Be Like You, a uh, Jungle Book. Now, King Louis isn't your typical villain, and the song by its nature isn't your typical villain song, but there's just something about I Want to Be Like You that is so ingrained with King Louis' attitude and his persona, and it's basically a song about this is what I want, you're going to give it to me because, yeah, it's me. So there's obviously a power element and an ego way of looking at it that I'm sure many of you who listen would find very familiar in, you know, people who crave power. <clears throat> Not me, but, you know, that kind of stuff. At number four, we have Friends on the Other Side. This is from The Princess and the Frog, and I believe this is uh, performed by uh, Cillier. Uh, and I think... I think this particular song is a standout moment, uh, not only for the film, but I think in the legacy of Disney, because uh, I think this is really captures what a villain song is while also providing a lot of narrative. And it's just really, really good just to, to listen to. At number three, we have from The Little Mermaid, uh, Pat Carroll doing a magnificent performance as Ursula as she performs Poor Unfortunate Souls. Now, (laughs) this is uh, obviously part of the amazing soundtrack. Some would say it's the best. It is the best soundtrack of the Disney legacy, of course, from The Little Mermaid. And uh, it's just a really interesting side to a villain that I don't think we've seen uh, at that point anyway from Disney's legacy. So it's very Ursula, the song Poor Unfortunate Souls, and it really shows off her personality and her um, her her manner, if we could put it that way. And it's just a damn good song to boot. At number two, I have Gaston. It's kind of in the similar sense that what we had with number five, though. This is kind of that with just so much more ego and... So much more vanity. I mean, for goodness sake, the song's name is Gaston. Um, And honestly, it is perhaps one of the best songs ever written, not just in a musical, but just ever. It is, it so eloquently captures uh, what was trying to be said at that moment and who Gaston really is. Terrible human being. At number one, we have Be Prepared, uh, Scar, Jeremy Irons, The Lion King, and I honestly really believe it would be, I don't think there's any other 
out there that would compete with this one. I mean, when you have a sequence in a song that mirrors Adolf Hitler and his Third Reich visually to boot, you know, um, that really is pulling out all the stops. Uh, you have the great character Scar and forming an alliance with this hyena army. It essentially is what it's intended to come out. And I think it's just um, a damn good song. It's like, you know what? It Also, it's just a great song to listen to when you're pissed at the world and you're plotting some mischievous thing that may or may not kill some people, you know, for those who do. Who do. And... It would, um, you know, it could, it could get you in that mood. And, uh, let's say if you're about to, I don't know, um, premeditate murder. No, no, we do not promote murder here. But um, for those who would consider to be that as such, um, this would be the song to kind of get you in the mood for that. So you know what, bitch? I'm going to fucking get your ass because I'm pissed and I want that and I'm going to get it. And I don't care if I have to burn the whole goddamn world to do it. And I think a lot of us, really, when you take away all of the externalities, can be wired in such a way and enjoy the pleasure of devastation and destruction. So I hope this is exactly what um, I was asked to do. So those are my five favorite uh, Disney villain songs that will be featured on the Fantasy Fair podcast. A special thanks to uh, Kyle Lara for um, doing this podcast, first of all, and for inviting me to kind of infuse my personality. And a lot of your uh, listeners have been missing that kind of edge to it. So, But no, in all seriousness, thanks to Kyle. And I uh, wish all of you the best of luck. And uh, Red Spotters, maybe you'll hear from me soon enough. Yes, sir. Nose, 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 ground. Nose from the underground. Star Wars, Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Uh, the Rogue, the last final Rogue One trailer. Down, 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 down. down. You gotta, you gotta mix it up so, dun, so you don't get copyright. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, the Rogue One trailer. Uh, A Star dropped. Wars story. Don't forget that part. Yes. Yes, a Star Wars story, a Rogue One Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was a beautiful trailer. What do you think about it? It is by far the best Star Wars trailer to come out since um, the Phantom Menace trailer, the teaser trailer. I think it's great. I think it looks awesome. Uh, I really, if this movie, because right now, like, still, the reshoots are scaring me. Like honestly, if if it weren't for the Peter, reshoots, Peter, let me let me just say Peter, this: Peter, everything me, scares you. I like for good reason, and you know it. You know it, because a lot of things I've been scared of have come true, especially when it comes to films. It's because you're making it come true. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Um, no, if, if the rumors hadn't come out about the reshoots with uh, Rogue One, I would probably be saying like, I think this is gonna be. The easily the best Star Wars film yeah. since uh, Empire Strikes Back. Even better than Episode Seven, Three, all of them. I don't know about the first and the and Empire Strikes Back. I think at this point it's just like they're too classic. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of impossible to say a film would be better than them. Yeah, because it's, it's it's once a film becomes a classic, it's kind of hard to say. I like, think. I think the first three Star Wars movies mm-hmm. have been put into the um, National they're, Film Registry. Yeah. They're, they're kind of on a pedestal that you can't... I mean, I, you can, but it's you can it, tr- it's hard. You will try. It's hard to take away all those like years and years of... Build up. Build up for all that. And just what those films created. But it just it just looks incredible. Visually, it looks like the best Star Wars film ever made mm-hmm. and I'm really hoping emotionally it, it really packs a punch because that it, that's what it looks like it's going to be and, and I, w- I was seeing someone talk about it and they said something that I think is something that I really agree with this is a Star Wars film that I don't know who's going to make it out at the end 
I, every, every, literally everyone could die or literally no one could die. Yeah. Like, we, we just don't know. I mean, of course we know at the end they get the plans and they Come find it. out December 16th, 2015. I think so. I okay. think it is. Because you just told me Doctor Strange was the 14th. Or no, you told me it was the 18th and it's the 4th. I thought it was the 18th. But no, just the trailer was absolutely beautiful. The lines are pretty cheesy, but I don't I think a lot of people forget Stars has always been cheesy as hell. I could have. I, I smelled your foul stench when yeah, I was yeah, brought on board. I, I'm sorry, but dialogue was never like something yeah. that Star Wars has been that great and then, at. And then, <laughs> and then you have, and then you have uh, Attack of the Clones, and it's like... I mean... The, the lines are I classic like, now. I don't like sand. It's dry and it's oh, coarse. But that's just bad on another level. <laughs> like, the the original films are lovably bad. Like, you nerf, you're, you scruffy looking. Are you like nerf, nerf herder? herder? Yeah. Like that's, Who's that's, scruffy looking? <laughs> those are terrible lines, but they're classic now. And they, and they they embody who the characters are. So I don't mind a little bit of cheesiness, as long as you make us love these characters. Yeah. But then and, uh, you don't. And then in the uh, and then in the prequels, you didn't. No, give but you didn't, you, didn't care, you didn't give a shit about this character. Yeah. <laughs> the only character I cared about was Obi Wan. So like, he said a lot of cheesy lines, but you know, Ewan McGregor, he sold them. Well, some of them. You know, I'm, I I meant to ask you this. This is way off topic, but it's mm. kind of related because it's Star Wars. Yes. You know, in that deleted scene in Episode Three, where it's um. They get, it's when Shock T is supposed to get stabbed by General Grievous. Yes. It was like a deleted, deleted scene. Uh -huh. And it has easily probably the worst line that would have been in the prequels. What? I think even worse than Sand. What does it say? It was like, um, it, when McGregor was like, you made a huge, and then Anakin says, mistake. Or it's something like that. And I, I, Did they just go Barney from, uh, from uh, How I Met Your Mother? I, I don't know. It's a legend. Wait for it. Dairy. I, don't, I, just, I just remember saying, like, wow, that was so bad. But then in episode seven... There's one deleted scene in, uh, okay. in Sith that I think they should have kept. Oh, she's not. It was when uh, Yoda landed on Dagobah. Yeah, that's whatever. But yeah, they probably should have kept it. But there's this scene... So I'm like, about, how did he wind up there? He took a ship, obviously. But there's a scene where um, Ray and uh, what's his name Finn say something really similar to that when they're running under underneath the the floorboards. Yeah. And when they first get onto Han Solo's ship and they're, they're trying to turn off the, uh, the 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 power and they accidentally release the wrath tars and all that. You see something like so so familiar to that. And I well, wonder to, if that was inspired by that. To me, the Wrath Tar scene is a canon. Why not? I like the Wrath Tar scene. You really don't like it? I don't like it. There's a lot of good moments in the Wrath Tar scene. That's, that's the one moment. That's the one moment in uh, Force Awakens that I. I, I don't what like. don't you like? And it's got to be more than you just don't like the Wrath Tars. I don't like the Wrath Tars. Is that it? Yeah. Then you're being freaking childish. Like, I don't care. Because there's a lot of great character moments in that. Like what? Other than uh, the standoff between uh, the mm. the cast from Raid Two and uh, and uh, and Scottish uh, Mark yeah. Ellis. Okay, yeah, that's great. And that was two, good. You see uh, Han Solo, the way he talks to both of them. You know, classic Han, very funny. Did that one point where Han grabs a guy and throws it into the Ratar's mouth? Yeah, like him just being an a hole. That's hilarious. Uh, that's the first time when, uh, uh, what's his name, Wookiee gets shot, yeah. Chewbacca, and then when he grabs uh, his thing and pff, shoots him. And he's like, whoa. Yeah, that's the first time goes, you see that. He goes Keanu Reeves. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, little, there's little moments here and there. It's a good, I understand. But as a whole. As a whole, that's what I'm saying. As a whole, it's good. I agree. I don't like the design or the CGI-ness of the Rathars. Yeah, I he, think it would be kind of cool if it, it would have giant puppets. That would have been cool. That would have been amazing. Yeah. That, that would have made it 100% better. But I got I to gotta take that away and just look at the scene as a whole, and I think it's a good scene. Um, but anyway, um, the Rogue One trailer, um, Darth Vader looks pissed. He looks amazing. Darth Vader looks great. He looks pissed. 
And I'm. I love this movie. There's a there's a theory going around that uh, that Jin, yeah. <laughs> no, I just imagined him storming. Into, you know that scene we see him when he yeah. storms out of the mist, and he's just like, "Where is Padme? <laughs> is she safe? Is she, is she safe? all right?" <laughs> Um, what if the last scene of the movie is them taking off with the Death Star plants, and he's there, it's looking at the the ship leave, and he's like, "No, <laughs> call back, <laughs> hashtag call back." That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. I, I you know why? That will be worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> Um, but going back, uh, Darth Vader looks pissed. The, there's a theory floating around that mm-hmm. Jyn Erso's dad purposefully uh, created a flaw in the Death Star plans, mm-hmm. in the in the Death Star layout that that uh, allows uh, Luke to put in that that turbo cannon into the little hole in the Death Star. What do you think of that? Um, I kind of hate, and sometimes when like a movie's really successful. And then people keep asking for more, and then so shit gets overly explained. Yeah. And the Star Wars is definitely, definitely um, has that. That's been a problem with Star Wars. I I remember seeing somewhere that there was a comic about you know when um, the droid that Luke first gets when he first gets R two D two and C-3PO, mm-hmm. but the first droid wasn't, they didn't get R2-D2. It, it was, was like some sort of red droid. Yeah, red droid, and then it malfunctioned, mm-hmm. and then they're like, okay, we'll just get R2-D2. There was a whole comic that followed that droid, and it turns out that that droid had force powers, and the force- The hell? Yeah, and the force you know, made it you know, go there, and that was its purpose, and so it malfunctioned on its own, so that it would, yeah, exactly. It, it gets that's how ridiculous it could get in Star Wars. Hey, it's not canon anymore. Don't worry. It's a legend. Star Wars legend. But that's that's what I'm a little afraid they're gonna start doing again. Is like overly explaining yeah. shit to the point where but it's I, ridiculous. Okay, but but, it, but this specifically, I can probably live with. I'm like okay, like the, it it does make sense, and it's not like that bad where it's like oh, cuz it looks like he's cuz it look cuz there's a shot in the trailer where mm-hmm. you see him on his on on all fours like like he was thrown or something like that so i'm wondering if vader found out and went to uh went to uh mr urso i don't know what his name is mm-hmm. i'm going to call him mr urso um uh, mr jenner i oh, know that's the jenner jen jenner <laughs> it's not jenner is his first name caitlin <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it looks like he was uh, thrown thrown to the ground, and he looks like he was like looking up to something. And I think that that was Vader. He was like, "You messed up the Death Star. I'm gonna kill you." Kind of. Kind but of I thing. feel like if they had known that they didn't know, they never knew that that was uh, a weak spot in the fourth movie when they attacked. Because at that point, if they knew that was a weak spot, they would have covered it up. Like but that's why they got the plans, though. That's why they got the plans. That way they could know what's going on at the Death Star. No, but that, that's what I'm saying. I don't think the Empire knew, ever, fa- never realized that that mm. specifically was a weak spot. Otherwise, they tri- they would have fixed it at that point. And even when, you know, they go and attack, they're never like, they're heading for our weak spot. Like, they, they never knew, you know, that that was, that that was there. At least from my recollection of Star Wars. So I don't think that was because I was like, like I think I think it's like I think it's almost like an attempt to write the biggest plot hole in the first movie. I don't think it's that big. I, I know a lot of people make a big deal about it, but I mean, when you're creating the space station that does, that's the size of a freaking planet, there's there's gonna be some weak spots. They're gonna overlook some things here and there. That probably wasn't the only Forget weak spot. Forget about it. I honestly think there probably was other weak spots, but like, you know, they only had like a few hours to look to find something and they found yeah. something. They're like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. So uh, I never saw it as, as, as much of a plot hole as I think other people saw it. But as far as that theory, um, I can see it. What do you think of, uh, of uh, Felicity Jones? She looks great. There's not much you know about her character, though. Other than 
her dad is her, yeah, helping her. make the Death Star. I thought it was the Geonosians who made the Death Star. They designed it. Maybe they needed help with other stuff. I don't know. Maybe they'll explain it. Maybe they won't. Generous Ho's dad is a space plumber. Technically. <laughs> no, he's a space architect. But I thought the Geonosians were, Geonosians were the architect. Was he an architect? Or maybe it This was, is what's freaking frustrating me about Well, about you're going to see thing. the movie. I guarantee you. He, maybe. Are they going to reference Geonosians? Probably. They, they reference clones in number seven. Yeah, but... They're, they're not above, like, they're not... But, like, yet, but yet again, they have a better property mm -hmm. to reference clones from, and that's Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah, like like I'm saying, they're not, they're not like, you know, F the prequels. They still consider it canon, and they'll still reference it when, you know, they have to. And they kind of have to with this. But I, I don't think it's, like, designing the Death Star. I think maybe it's just, like, dealing with the, the technology. But the Kyber Crystal... Because is, I know is, that is that the thing that shoots. The, yeah, because I know that that's what powers the Death Star, mm -hmm. the Kyber Crystal, a giant uh, Kyber Crystal. Because even if you, um, someone designs something, you still need like other people to come in and maybe help. So he's like, it. so he's like a space engineer. I just said that, and you attacked me. Oh. Oh no, I said architect. Never mind. Yeah, engineer is probably better. But um, we'll see. I'm pretty sure they'll explain it. Better because explain. They'll explain. It. Explain. Um, are you are you af af as afraid of me as that they're gonna dumb down the uh, sort of the war, the feeling of it being an actual war and sort of the. To me, I'm not I'm not afraid of of a movie until I'm 15 minutes into a movie. Really. Really. I don't believe that. Why? Because we've seen trailers and you're like. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. Well, because the trailer looks like crap. <laughs> okay. And so That's like, true. These trailers are really good. Okay. So I was like, okay, so yeah, like like sponge out of water. I wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be so entertained about that movie, but I was entertained about that. That about movie that. is an acid trip. It I'm is. Sorry. It's a great acid trip, though. Forget Doctor Strange. Let's just have a sponge... Spongebob, sponge cinematic. out of water. Oh, I thought you were going to say cinematic universe. No. I like this. Yes, yeah. let's have a cinematic Spongebob universe. You need to stop with your cinematic universes. You want everything to I be want, a I want to, first and foremost, the only one that I want to be a cinematic universe is uh, is the Nintendo. Uh, I think that's so dumb. Nintendo property to be a cinematic universe. What do you think of the new Nintendo system? I, I don't know much about it. The okay. Nintendo Switch, isn't it? Is yeah. that what it's called? I don't know much we'll about it. We'll talk about it in our new podcast. Game podcast. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just created. Uh, Patent. <laughs> um, Peter? Yes. Are you hooked on a feeling? No. Are you hooked on a feeling? No, I'm not. <laughs> You know where I'm going with this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no shit. Yes. Are you hooked on a Are you hooked on a feeling? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> um, Guardians just released a sneak peek teaser trailer. Yeah. Is it officially confirmed as a as a teaser trailer, or is it just a sneak peek at the movie? You know what? I really hate the the title um, teaser trailer. Yeah. I really feel because to me, it's not teaser trailer is such a stupid name. I really feel though these kind of trailers a... should be called announcement trailers. Announcement. Because to me, it's more of just announcing to people, "Hey, we're making this film. We're coming back." Yeah, like it, it's not really to me. It's not like a teaser. It's just, dude, that, it's, that, it's that announcing to the world, this movie's coming out. That I, I saw. You know, I was like scrolling down Facebook, and then I saw, and then I saw, uh, and I saw Marvel Studios post the thing. I made this. Oh my god, guys! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! So I so I put it on. It, it automatically hooked me into the into the universe again with the because you love the song with the blue suede song and you know what? I don't care who you are now. When people hear that specific song, they automatically think of Guardians. Well, no duh. That's why they put it on this uh, trailer because they're like people are gonna know him at automatically. You know, who, I can't find this, this feeling. And um, overall, 
I because there, there's not really nothing to go on really. It just shows Other than that Baby Gru. Uh, yeah. You have Yondu. Yeah, but I'm saying like as far as the film yeah. is concerned, there's nothing to really to go on. You get a little bit of dialogue between uh, a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. And, uh, and that's funny. Yeah, it's really funny. So you need to find <laughs> you need to find a female who's pathetic, like you. You need a hug. <laughs> no, not really. And he just proceeds to give him a hug. I think it's gonna be great. I think it's I gonna love, be great I love too. James Gunn, and I'm really excited. That's about my group. Guardians of the Galaxy is my second favorite Marvel uh, uh, MCU film. film. MCU film of all time. I remember at the time when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, it was probably like my most anticipated film. Yeah. Out of like any. And the I thing, was more excited for that than I think. The thing is, is that it doesn't have to live up to a certain expectation. Yeah, I think that's what excited me the most because I had no clue what the hell Guardians of the Galaxy was. Oh, me neither. And I didn't try to find out because I was like, I just want to go in go and pure mind and just yeah. have fun with it. And I did. That was just such a fun um, space adventure. And me. I love the Breakfast Club esque uh, yeah. Pretty in Pink uh, oh, poster. poster. That's a that's a cool poster. The, like, and then and then you see in the co- little little uh, corner of a uh, of a uh, Star Lord's uh, boot that it's a uh, baby real group. Tiny. Do you baby. think he's gonna be Baby Groot the entire film? I don't. I don't know. Maybe an end credit scene. He's all grown up or something like that. But it'll be cool. You know what? That's an that's an advantage they have. What? Baby Groot, because he could yeah. sneak into, you know, into different places. Um, Plus, and then, people just love Groot, and then if you turn him into a baby, it's just you just doubled your ticket sales. Yes, right? and you have a you have a you have a rocket rocket raccoon. Mm-hmm. And then you have a uh, you have a uh, nebula in the in the corner. You have Yondu. Um, I don't know. I'm re- I'm really looking forward to it. That's a beautiful poster. It's just a f- it's just a photo of the characters, and then and then you have the the font Guardians of the Galaxy. It's very it's a very John Hughes. When do you think we're gonna get an official trailer? Because isn't it the next MCU film? Yeah, after uh, I don't know maybe af- a little after. Uh, um, Strange? Because I don't think it's going to come with Strange in theaters. You don't think so? No, because they just dropped the the uh, teaser trailer. Yeah. So it's going to be a while before you get like a official Maybe trailer. during Christmas or Rogue One. Jimmy Kimmel. Rogue One. Do you yeah, think? it's probably going to come out with Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah. So Rogue One, um, which we're both looking forward to seeing. Very much. Yeah. So excited for Rogue One. I'm excited too, man. It's so good. What are you more looking forward to, uh, Strange or Rogue One? Uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah. Yeah. I think Strange. I'm gonna have a great time. You know, it's funny. With you know, Marvel alcohol films, required. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> you make it so hard to like you, Kyle. Why do you do this? <laughs> no. Um, with Marvel films, it's weird because most of the times I don't get like overly excited. Mm. Like I'm just like. I know, I'm, I know, I know I'm going to like it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to be there day one, and it's just, I don't... Maybe that's why, where I'm just like, yeah, I know I'm going to like it. So I just brush it off. So you put it on the back burner. Yeah, I put it on the back burner, and then when I watch it, like, I... like. Maybe that's why I'm also able to enjoy it more, because there's none of this hype. Like, oh, yeah. Like, for Civil War, mm-hmm. I wasn't really, like, super, super hyped. I was just like, I know I'm going to like it. So then when I watched it, I was like, oh, shit. Like, this oh. is great, you know? <laughs> So I think the same thing is going to happen with Doctor Strange. The last time where I was like really, really hyped, and maybe it's just because there was a big chance it could have been bad, was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Because that was a big question. They're like, can they pull it off? You know? And I know everyone now is like, of course it was big. It's like, no. I remember when they announced it, people were like, huh? Is this... What? People were like, there was so many articles where like, Marvel's first, you know, first big mistake... But God then hands, it da, is da, da, one da, da, of the da, da, biggest da, da. Uh, successes that Marvel has Heck had, yeah. dude. I mean, it it automatically it 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 was the cult classic that became mainstream, kind of kind of sorta. <laughs> it was never a cult classic. It, it was meant okay. The way it was designed, it was designed to be like a cult classic. But then you you get into the gist, and it became an overnight success. It was it was never. Um, I, I, I get what you're saying because it wasn't like an A, yeah. B, C, not even a D list property. It was like a G list property. Because not even like uh, us two who really like comics and grew up reading comics. Yeah. 
I never read Guardians of the Galaxy. I never read Guardians of the Galaxy. I knew who Iron Man was. I knew who Captain America yeah. was. And then all of a sudden they announced Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like this. Um, oh, but you know what? Start flipping pages. You know what's another reason I think I was super excited for Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Why? That was before uh, I think Star Wars was even announced. Yeah. So I was just... No, it was announced. It was announced. When they first announced Guardians, I don't think they had announced Star Wars yet. Or had they? Maybe they had. But uh, the point is, it had been a long time. Star Wars was announced uh, 2012. I can't remember. And uh, Guardians came out 2014. But I'm saying when Guardians itself was announced, Uh that they were going to make the movie. I think it was like announced summer of 2013. We got to look this up. But I guess my point is, I had, you know, I had Star Wars fix that had not been filled in forever. The well was dry. Yes. And it, and it, and it it really filled it. It it filled it pretty well. And then, and then you have uh, the runaways, uh, cherry bomb going on. Oh, it was just a fun And then it was like, I I love, number one, okay, the soundtrack, dude. The soundtrack is amazing. This is this is your problem, Kyle. What, what's my problem? What's my problem? Because you were you will literally forgive anything in a film if it has yeah. a, if it has a good soundtrack. I love soundtracks, man. You will forgive anything. I, I dude. Okay, if if uh, if during the um, the invasion of the of the Trade Federation ship in the sky, <laughs> and if they and if they played uh, BC Boy Sabotage. <laughs> going on I would have been completely okay with that scene <laughs> like as all the Naboo ships I can't see <laughs> you know what would be funny what? like they're playing that and they hard cut to a mall and they're playing the duel of phase yeah oh, I can't, can't see <laughs> remix. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a Skrillex remix. Hey, Skrillex is big. Yeah. Him up in that Suicide Squad. <laughs> the, the Suicide Squad. <laughs> okay, we're just saying shit now. What yeah. are we talking about? Um, the last bit of news. Uh, Colin Firth is gonna be joining Mary Poppins Returns. I do not care. That's great. That's great. You know what? I to me, I am on the same boat with you. I don't. I don't. I don't give a shit unless he's killing people with the with the free bird playing am, in the background. I am much more excited about his return to Kingsman, dude. Kingsman, yeah. I, they better, dude. Okay, free okay. Here's what. Here's what I want. Okay, yeah. him to invade like a diner this time around. He's gonna invade a diner, okay. and instead of Free Bird, uh-huh. it's gonna be BC Boy Sabotage. <laughs> Not every film can have sabotage. The, we need more. I have a fever, and the only prescription is more sabotage. <laughs> what would you do if the next Star Trek film had it had sabotage again? Yes, yes, I want it. I want it so much. No, I'm I want sorry. it so much. It's Sab- it's the, the world needs more sabotage. I think the world gets too much sabotage. I think. I think. The the world needs to be sabotaged with more sabotage. No. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think we run its. I think our uh, little show here has run its course. Um, without further ado, I'm Kyle Lara. I'm Alexis. That's great. Uh, check, check us out. Check out all of our other uh, material. Check out our other stuff. Check out our red, our regular, uh, least scheduled uh, red spotlight entertainment uh, podcast. Check out our other fantasy fairs. Check out our audio commentaries. We recently did a Hocus Pocus audio commentary. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And never say that word. <laughs> never. Uh, I'm your host, Kyle Lira. Ladies and gentlemen, for now. Stay magical, everyone. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come.
It's a carousel of colors. All who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here oh, youth Disney may savor the presents. challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you.